Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com, live in the Bryce Jordan Center here at Penn State, as the locals refer to it, the BJC. Uh, Purdue just won 74-67 here at Penn State. This is your rap video following uh, that game, obviously. Uh, it is brought to you by our friends at the Purdue Union Club Hotel and the 811 Restaurant. We appreciate their support, and I can promise you this. If there was a Purdue Union Club Hotel at Penn State, that's where I'd be staying tonight. Uh, but there's not. Uh, obviously, Purdue wanted to get off, get back in the win column here uh, after the disappointing game to Wisconsin. Um, I think, you know, now that you've won the game, I think it was a good thing for Purdue probably to be in a close game, uh, to uh, be in those high leverage moments at the very end, you know, to be in a situation where you have to get really high leverage uh, stops from a defensive perspective in that stretch there where Penn State uh, made eight straight field goals put Purdue in that position. And I think that stretch had a lot more to do with Penn State just making shots, making difficult shots. Jaden Pickett made a really difficult shot. Seth Lundy made a step back three. I think that stretch had more to do with Penn State getting hot than it did Purdue being negligent defensively. I think it started with a breakdown uh, on Purdue's part, but I think the story of that run was sort of Purdue or Penn State just getting hot and um, really making a game of this and uh, putting Purdue in a situation where they had to go one of two ways here. And uh, I think them being able to close out this game from a defensive perspective, I think could have been a really significant step for this team. Um, they've had opportunities to do that in the games they've lost. They were obviously were not able to do that. They couldn't stop Johnny Davis to save their lives. They couldn't stop Ron Harper at Rutgers to save their lives. In this case, they were able to get those stops, but also they were able to obviously score the baskets they needed to get this game won. Purdue made so many clutch plays in the last you know five, six minutes of this game that you forget about because Penn State immediately responded uh, during that 8-of-8 eight eight run. Uh, when you look back at the threes Mason Gillis made, when you look back at the three Isaiah Thompson made, um, that's all before the stuff Travion Williams did here in the last two minutes of the game. Also, the three Mason Gillis made, one of the threes I referenced with two and a half minutes to go, obviously was a really big deal. Um, but the reality is this was uh, another, you know, situation where Purdue just relied on Travion Williams to kind of take them home. They've done this so many times over the years with him. Last year, he did a good job with it at Michigan State. There were some games Purdue didn't win that he put them in position to win because he was so good and so clutch down the stretch. I've said this before about him. He's one of the most clutch players I think that Purdue's had uh, in my frame of reference at Purdue because he's so often been that guy where when you need a basket desperately, you can go to him and he has a great track record here of getting it done. Uh, the Rutgers game was one of the few exceptions where that, that weird offensive foul they called on him, you know, um, but kind of rambling here for a second. When you look at the final eight minutes of this game, Travion Williams comes right back in the game at 8-11 after he had to go out with the foul trouble. Makes a hook shot and one. My handwriting is a disaster, so you have to bear with me here. Uh, 4.58 to go, Travion Williams, post-basket. Um, 3.15 maybe? This was really significant because Greg Lee had just given Penn State a lead with that three-pointer uh, with 3.42 to go. Travion Williams puts back Jaden Ivey's miss uh, to give Purdue the lead back. They never trailed again. Uh, obviously an enormous play, 105 to go. You know, really high leverage moment for Purdue offensively. Who do you go to? You go to Travion Williams. He gets John Harar one-on-one -on -one in the post. Penn State doesn't help on him. He gets an N1. Just an enormous play, obviously, um, for Travion Williams. So he's sort of that guy he's always been uh, for Purdue, that really reliable, steady presence offensively when you need somebody to buoy you in, in, in tight situations. B-U-O-Y, not boo-booey. B-U-O-Y, buoy, meaning to stabilize, to steady, whatever uh, synonym you want to use. Buoy, that is what Travion Williams has so often done in his career in really important offensive situations for Purdue. Did it again tonight, today. I have to condition myself here to remember this was an afternoon special. Um, so that's sort of the, the story of this for me anyway, is just Travion Williams once again pushing Purdue across across the finish line. But it wasn't just him, obviously. I mentioned so many times before all the clutch plays they made offensively uh, from Isaiah Thompson's three. He needed that one bad. Uh, to Mason Gillis, you know, 
making two really big threes, making a really big play before halftime. I'll get to that more later. Um, but then just Penn State responding every time. Uh, you have to give Penn State, I think, more credit for that than you have to give Purdue fault. Uh, but the most important part of this was at both ends of the floor, Purdue did what Purdue needed to do to get this game won in a situation where things obviously could have turned out very badly because when you're uh, down one on the road with three minutes and 42 seconds to go and your opponent has made eight straight shots, it's not a great position to be in. That was a situation where you had to just flip the script right then and there. You had, you had to do something positive. You had to get your legs back under you. You had to turn this game around, not like a battleship, like uh, something that turns around much faster than a battleship. That's exactly what Purdue did. From a defensive perspective, that shot clock violation they forced right after Williams' tip in obviously couldn't have been timed any better. They got every defensive stop except for one uh, from there on out. Just a really important, I think, collection of moments for Purdue at both ends of the floor here, offensively and defensively. And uh, one where anytime you succeed where you have before failed, that could be a very significant thing and you know this was the situation Purdue was in at Rutgers this was the situation Purdue was in against Wisconsin those tight games they'd gotten them done you know before Villanova didn't really come down to the wire so I shouldn't count that one but uh, NC State obviously was one of those games but that seems like months ago now Big Ten play is different getting this done on the road in Big Ten play is significant uh, for Purdue obviously Penn State is not anything to sneeze at here. Micah Shrewsbury is damn right uh, what he said in the postgame press conference about them not being a bad team and people perceiving it when somebody loses here that that's a bad loss. Watch this team play. Watch the games they played before today. There's a reason I only picked the number three team in the country to win this game by three points today was because I thought this, I thought these guys, I think these guys play hard. I think they've done a good job defensively this season relative to their, probably their assets and their background with this coaching staff they can shoot they can spread you out they have guys who play really hard and I thought these guys were going to be a real problem for Purdue I was correct um, but I, I only bring that up to to mention that this wasn't Purdue beating a bad team on the road this was Purdue beating a very solid one that gives really good effort that's playing with a lot of enthusiasm that really really fought Purdue here and Again, things are different in Big Ten play. This isn't like you're going on the road in non-conference to play whoever it might be. Who you're, you're, you're so much better than. Big Ten basketball is different. When your coach knows the jersey sizes of all your players, let alone all of their basketball habits, all of their basketball strengths and weaknesses, that is something that cannot not matter in a basketball game. And I think it probably did in some way, shape, or form. Purdue was good enough. You know, to overcome it, I think it was really significant for Purdue to have to overcome some weird circumstances, that being one of them. The other one being the fact that, you know, Purdue does not practice without Zach Eady or Travion Williams at all times on the floor. For both of those guys to get in foul trouble and for Matt Painter to not be willing to run Will Williams out there in the first half with two fouls uh, for fear of his third, too, which really would have put you in a really would have put you in a blender here in the second half for them to have to play real meaningful minutes in both halves without the player or the category of player, however you want to term this, that they build their team around at both ends of the floor, <clears throat> both ends of the floor. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. For Purdue to have to play really meaningful, important minutes in both halves without the player or category of player that they build their team around at both ends of the floor and for them to do that successfully, for them to weather that, for them to have to adjust on the fly, do positive things, just to not only survive but even thrive, Purdue extended the lead uh, at the end of the first half without Williams or Edie on the floor. And that was, I thought that was going to be the most important stretch of the game until the very end of the game. I didn't know how it was going to play out, obviously, but I figured had Purdue won the way it looked like they were going to win there for a while, that was going to be your stretch of the game where Penn State couldn't, take advantage of Purdue being different and thrown sideways by the fact that personnel incontinuity or is that even a word? I, I don't know. Um, but Penn State turned it over three straight times against those lineups. Jaden Ivey made a big three. Mason Gillis obviously makes another one of those plays. Uh, you know, Chris Kramer, and I've 
tried to keep the Chris Kramer comparisons to a minimum over the years because it's become almost cliche that anytime somebody plays hard or is a disruptive defensive player or a white guy, whatever it might be, they get compared to Chris Kramer. It, it, it doesn't take much to get Chris Kramer comparisons around Purdue these days or ever. But Mason Gillis has that knack for that moment, that play, that thing he does that's not really a statistic but changes the game. Um, he's done this over and over again this season, just getting fouled chasing offensive rebounds. And it has changed games before. You know, Chris Kramer every now and then would dive on a loose ball or get a deflection or something like that, and games would kind of change. You know, so every now and then he, he would get a pick six or something like that, but games would change. I didn't want to use the steal for the basket as my face of something that doesn't show up as a statistic because obviously that shows up as two statistics. But my point is that certain players have a knack for tone setting in games and for just impacting games in a, such a profound way that they don't even have to be put down in, in, in ink on, on a printed out box score. And I think Mason Gillis is really, really becoming that sort of player if he's not that sort of player already. It might have been Iowa. One of those games, there was a play where he got fouled going for an offensive rebound, and it was just one of those plays where everything just changed afterwards. Him doing the exact same thing before halftime and getting two cheap points, I think, was that exact sort of play because that was the difference between Purdue going into halftime up three and up five. Obviously, that's a two-point difference, uh, so not really all of that big of a deal from a scoreboard perspective, but I think it gave Purdue some wind beneath its sails whatever the term would be. Um, and also, it just got, it got you through that situation where you didn't have Williams or Edie on the floor and you actually extended your lead. I thought that was really significant. Purdue got off to a pretty good start to start the second half, too. Maybe a little bit of positive energy going into the locker room. Maybe that helps. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a mind reader, any of those things. But I think any time you make a big play before halftime, it matters. And I think Mason Gillis made a big play before halftime and I do think it mattered. Um, I don't have a box score on me. I have it on my phone here. Uh, so I don't want to reel off any statistics here and be wrong. But Mason Gillis is becoming that guy. I mean, he, he takes he takes five shots today and gets 14 points. He makes the play I just mentioned. He makes clutch shots, man. He makes that one three he made uh, with 2.27 to go. Enormous shot. Obviously, he missed the one that came afterwards. That was his only miss from three on the day. But he is becoming just the definition of a winning player in every every way, shape, and form uh, possible. And I think seeing that growth from him, not that he didn't show flashes of it last year, but on, on a better team this year, it's really coming out. And as I've said many times before, since last year, I think his value comes out even more in Big Ten play, where every little thing matters that much more, where everything's more physical, where games change on getting fouled on offensive rebounds, where maybe that doesn't happen against a Villanova or a North Carolina or a high possessions, high scoring kind of game. Little things matter so much more in Big Ten play than they do in any other arena, not a physical arena, a theoretical arena, that players like Mason Gillis really come to the forefront and you know I think Purdue's kind of moving forward I think they're going to keep drawing a ton of value from him I think the defensive improvement they showed today that may or may not even show up on the box score uh, because Penn State obviously scored 67 points not a horrible number but the eight of eight stretch there I think was really kind of the black eye on what how people might perceive Purdue's defensive performance today. I thought that stretch was way more about Penn State than Purdue. I think I said that already, but I don't remember because I talk in circles and I forget what I've said. But uh, I do think Purdue showed real improvement defensively. Uh, today I thought they played together more. I thought they were more energetic. I just thought they were different, a better different. That said, you played close to a quarter of this game probably without your 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 normal lineup out there so it's not like you you did it for 40 minutes you got to show consistency now you have to the guys who haven't been very good defensively who were better today the whole operation this sort of thing has to become their normal now this has to be an every game sort of deal 
because Purdue's got to realize, and maybe they already have, that you're not going to win the sorts of games you need to win to have the sort of season you want to have without being a good defensive team, without being able to get the sort of stops you got in the last three minutes of this game tonight. Uh, so a positive step in that direction for Purdue. Um, one they need to build on now. When they're going to get a chance to build on it, I have no idea because the game at Michigan on Tuesday night is very much up in the air right now because Michigan has COVID issues that uh, waylaid their uh, uh, Michigan State game today. Uh, my understanding as of this morning was that game was very, very in doubt and uh, probably fair to say it still is. We'll see what happens here in the next 24 to 36 hours um, in terms of what final determinations made on that game. But that's been your wrap video following Purdue's 74 to 67 win here at Penn State. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. And thank you to the Purdue Union Club Hotel uh, and the 811 Restaurant. As I said before, if there was a Purdue Union Club Hotel at Penn State, and why isn't there? That's where I'd be staying uh, tonight. So I'll talk to you again whenever the hell Purdue plays basketball again. So thanks, everybody.